Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining the Behind Company Lines podcast. Today I have Jason Alvarez Cohen, CEO of Popple, a technology company based in Los Angeles that is building the next generation digital business card platform. Jason, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really excited to chat with you and, and especially because you're in LA as well. So I'm sure we'll connect now and, and in the future. But before we dive into all the good stuff, I would love to learn what were you doing before you started Popple? Yeah. Well, first off, Julian, thank you for having me. Very excited to talk about the journey and the company. Yeah, we'll get right into it. So before Popple, I actually graduated from UCLA in 2018 and I was computer science. That was my major. I knew I was technical and I wanted to be somewhat technical and software was just really exciting to me. So I went right into that. And after UCLA, I quickly was at a startup, a relatively small startup outside of Dallas for three months which was some good experience on the software side. And then I went to Boeing for about eight months. And so Boeing, you know, big aerospace company, that was in El Segundo. And that was a great experience working with great people. But I realized during Boeing, my Boeing experience that I wanted to create my own thing, right? Like I wanted to use the knowledge that I got from UCLA and I wanted to create my own company and build out a team of, of excited quality people. And so, yeah, I basically told myself, I gave myself a goal. Within one year at Boeing, I'm going to start my own thing. And sure enough, eight months later, I left for Popple. Amazing, man. What was the transition going from a, a startup, like a startup and then to Boeing, which is a huge, you know, multinational company yeah. and an international company as well. Like wh wh what was that transition like? Yeah. So I really enjoyed it because I got both the startup, a little bit of the startup tapes, but then I also got that big company tapes. Boeing has hundreds of thousands of employees. So it is a very other end of the spectrum and good and bad things, good things. You're working with incredibly smart people, but you know, there are some downsides in that you're kind of more of a cog in the machine, right? You're, you're <laughs> one in many. And some of the projects I was working on maybe weren't my favorite. I also had less control over what I could work on. And I was kind of like, here's your tasks. This is what you're going to mm -hmm. do. So, you know, it's to each their own, but it wasn't exactly for me. Sure. Sure. What was, was there any like feeling, and you mentioned, you know, throughout college, you kind of had this idea of, of wanting to start your own thing. You had these experiences, you set a goal, you know, for yourself, and then you took the leap. What was that feeling that you had festering in you that were, that led you to start your own company and, and then start Popple? Yeah. I love talking about this because I, I remember it so vividly. I would finish courses at UCLA and then I would just spend hours thinking about something that I can create. What has something, what is something, an idea that people have not thought of yet? And I would just rack my brain and think about my day. What did I do throughout my day? What can be optimized? And I was looking, I was searching for an idea. And what's funny is that it took a little bit of luck for me to stumble upon what is now Popple. And it actually wasn't one of my brainstorming sessions of, of hours of thinking about things. So it's, it's interesting, you know, you get a little bit of luck and experience by doing things yeah. in the world and things kind of come by you. Yeah. People talk a lot about it, that like brainstorming experience and, and some people journal, some people write down ideas and, you know, ever know, yeah. and, and all these other platforms, what was your process like? And, and how do you think it helped now that you have Popple and are starting and, and what from that exercise has helped kind of in, in your, in this experience now? Yeah. So I was using, basically I was writing down notes, I, you know, iOS notes, and I was writing down kind of things that I noticed that could be improved. And then I would do yeah. research like. Has this been created yet? And I would kind of do keyword research and see if it's out there and I never really kind of stumbled on anything that I was like, okay, I'm going to go in on this. And so, but I just had a bunch of these notes that was like, here's an idea that I could start. Here's an idea. And uh, so that took me to, you know, what that did do is it put me in a mindset to be curious and I would ask questions. I would, I would learn about things and I'd be this, okay, I wanted to come across an idea. So it turned into me being curious. And that then led to me finding Popple. And I like to think yeah. that like, if I wasn't in that mindset, if I wasn't trying to come up with an idea, I maybe wouldn't have kind of looked at that world in that lens. That's a, yeah, that, I, that curiosity piece is something I hear time and time again. It's, 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 it's not necessarily seeking out. Yeah. It's not, it's not like it's seeking out certain particular information, but it's just the openness and the curiosity, like going down the rabbit hole time and time again, until maybe patterns form and then you know, something seems so clear in your mind that, that it's almost, I don't know, it's, it's almost like a feeling that gravitates towards you where it's like, it, it's just, it would be silly if I didn't start. And you said, you, you talk about this little bit of luck that, you know, brought you into Popple and, and starting this company. What, what was that experience? What, what do you mean by that luck? Yeah. 
So I, I was at a event in the Hollywood Hills and I happened to come across NFC technology, which is what Popo uses, right? And so I came across the technology and what was key and what I learned at that moment was that, okay, you can have an NFC device that taps an iPhone and I don't have to have any kind of app and I can receive data, right? So you can have an NFC device that taps a phone and it sends information to that phone and the phone doesn't need an app. If everyone needed the app in order to use Popple, we would have a network effect problem where in order for Popple to be valuable, everyone would have to have it. And that's the hardest part because then you have to get everyone on it in order for it to be valuable. And that's very hard to do because it's very hard to acquire all these, all these users and the world's so huge. So the fact that you, I learned this and I saw, wait a second, okay, you can tap someone's phone and share information. That was the spark. And that was just yeah. me being curious. And so then at the, after that event, I spent, you know, a couple of days researching and really looking mm -hmm. into the technology and, and seeing, okay, how can I potentially use this and turn this into a company? And so that was the, the impetus. And so I like to say a little bit of luck because I was at this event and then a little yeah. bit of just being curious and research after. I love that. Well, we'll describe the technology a little bit for, the, for people who don't know and uh, yeah. NFC technology. Absolutely. So. NFC technology is the technology that Apple and Google Pay uses. So everyone knows Apple and Google Pay, you tap to pay. We essentially use that same technology, but instead we use it for sharing information like contacts, social media, websites, et cetera. So instead of paying, you are sharing information and we like to call this a digital business card. So when I saw this, my first thought was, wait a second, you could probably use this to share an Instagram, right? I could have someone's phone and share my Instagram or share my phone number. And this was important to me because I was, I'm a big networker. I like to socialize. And so I, I've kind of been looking for a less awkward way to share this information with people I meet and connect like instantly. And so this was like, okay, you know what? Wow. This is a possible technology that I can use right now. These phones are working with this natively right now. And so it was like a nice spark at that, point, at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I love the, the less awkward piece because there is some kind of you hear in a flow of conversation with someone that you're just meeting. And, and I think people don't uh, appreciate that to interrupt that flow is difficult to kind of maintain that connection and get to the next step, which is, you know, maybe a new conversation or some other possibility. So that's super yeah. that's fascinating that it more allowed that, though, that point. Yeah. More than just the awkwardness, it's also just the, the organization of contact. Yeah. Right. Like you can finish an event and maybe you have two Instagram followers, three people follow you on Twitter. And then I have two texts from random numbers. I don't know who they are. And so it's kind of like, it's an all consolidation into one platform. And that's really what we're focused on. That's amazing. What, what got into contacts in, in general and what contacts are incorporated in Popple and, and what you're able to share? What, what do you mean by what contacts? Yeah. So, you know, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's phone number. Oh, like, what's it, yeah. What's involved in, yeah, in the information that you're sharing and how do you select it also? Yeah. So we, so I'll start off by saying that you create your profile that you share with others through our mobile yeah. app, right? So you download Popple, you start, you create your profile and then it says, okay, add information to your profile and you can add anything from our link store. We have over 50 links now where it could be anything from Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all these social medias, contact information, phone number, email, FaceTime, even if you want. Yeah. WhatsApp, et cetera. And then you can, sh you can add uh, additional content like embedded videos, marketing documents, PDFs, team directories, it yeah. really anything. Like we have all these different types of link, link options, and then you can add to your profile based on what you want to share with others. And so right. yeah, create the account, add these links, and then you go out in the world and share them with people. Yeah. What, what's the sharing experience like? Can you walk me through the, the, the journey? You know, I have, I have my capsule account and I share it with somebody. What do they see on their end? Yeah. I do a live demo. Oh, yeah. So here's my phone, right? So all I have to do is this is one of our products. So wearable, all I have to do is tap the top of my phone, a little notification pops up. And then when you tap that, it opens up my profile, which has all this information here. So I have these at the top. I have a link tree like style here, but you can make yeah. your profile however you want. And then, yeah, so your most important ones go at the top. That's kind of what you want to focus on. And then we also have this exchange contact button, which will save everything on my profile as a contact in your phone. 
Incredible. So, so with it translates into your phone, it, it kind of holds all these links and organizes them well. I'm always curious with, with founders for building kind of a physical technology that mm -hmm. checks out. So this is the, this is the beaker. So yeah. this is how an iPhone or an Android will save your contacts into their phone. And so you'll yeah. see, we, we nicely and automatically package everything up into this B card, even my, yeah. you know, where I'm based. And so it's yeah. nice and a full, you know, information of data. Yeah. Well, what is the challenge of, of building in a physical space? So, you know, you have this instrument that then relates to technology and, and relays this information. You know, typically the founders I talk to are, are more software focused. So it's, you know, downloading software, implementing into the team. But yep. I know that, you know, with, with different challenges and within the physical space, uh, what are those that you face that that's just different than building just virtual technology that's on the cloud and Absolutely. that type of information? It's a, it's a great question. And uh, yeah, you know, hardware can be considered harder, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got fulfillments, you got, you got facilities, you got to manage shipping and all this stuff. So what's nice about our, our products, they're relatively inexpensive. So we're able to ship relatively cheaply and have them managed in different facilities. We have three now and worldwide. So it makes it nice and easy to move items around. And yeah, you know, you can consider it as less scalable because it's, you know, software, you could have millions of downloads every minute if you, if you were just getting enough traffic, whereas hardware, it's like, you have to ship the products and you're right. That does take longer and yeah, as you have shipping delays, et cetera. But yeah, we've gotten it down to a science. And so I like to think that it's nice that we have this hardware. What we've seen is that hardware is better adopted from our users because they like yeah. the experience better. The, the kind of software solution for us would be the QR code, right? So yeah. I just have the app, I open up my QR code, you scan this. Difference there is that QR code is, is not passive for the person you're sharing to. So Joanne, yeah. if I meet you, you have to pull out your phone and you have to open up your camera and you have to scan my phone. Whereas if I'm using an NFC device, all I have to do is tap your phone. You don't have to do anything on your end. And so it's kind of like a more seamless experience. Yeah, that, that, that's incredible. And, and I can only think about how it, how it quickly expedites the process to get your information, get it to the right person and, and categorize it and how much stronger that connection connection is. Tell me about the, exactly. the, the process that you went through. I know you went through YC and, and you were able to raise a, you know, pretty awesome uh, round of like two, uh, like 2.3 million or something like that. Oh, I can't remember the exact yeah. figure, but what was, what was the pitch? What was the conversation? I'm always curious about how founders communicate the value of their products to investors. Yeah. How was that pitch? How did that look like? What was that? Yeah. So it was an exciting time. We did Y Combinator last year, winter 21 was our, was our batch. And so we went through that, got some great teachings. Our group leader was Michael Seibel, who is an incredible person and very smart, very sharp guy. And every time we met with him, it would be like a, a shakeup. We would meet with her and then there's like all these things that we were not even thinking about, weren't even on our radar. And then we'd be like, wow, that's so smart. Thank you for that advice. So if you're thinking about flying to YC, I highly recommend. Oh yeah. So did that. It was a three month cohort. And at the end of YC, you have what's called demo day. Demo day is where you have for us, because we had a lot of companies in our batch, you have 60 seconds and one slide and you pitch your company to thousands of investors who are watching the demo day, right? And so this was virtual. So it's really nice. It allows people to watch from all over the world. And so we did this and we got a bunch of inbound from the demo day. And then, yeah, we were able to close our seed round within about two weeks. So it was a very fast process. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Rock Combinator for, for facilitating that. And yeah. really for us, the way we kind of framed Popple was around just look at our product, look how much we're selling. We had a lot of traction. And here, here's where we're going. And we were able to kind yeah. of paint that world where it's like, okay, clearly people are loving this. We have all this traction, but we also at that point had just released Popple Pro, which is our first in-app subscription, which is growing really fast. So we had that on our end as well. And so both that, and then the, the hardware revenue was powerful for us and it was key for us to close our first round. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of the, the story and the journey and the mission of, of Popple, what was the most compelling part that you think, you know, investors really resonated oh, with? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that this is going to be how people connect yeah. in the next five years, right? Like in the next five years, Julian, I want to meet you and I want us to tap phones and we don't even mention it because it's so normal. <laughs> like yeah. I tap your phone, you tap mine. And it's just like, all right, nice to meet you. We walk away right now. If you, if I tap your phone, 
now we're talking about Popple because that, because like the person you're meeting probably doesn't know what it is yet. It's like, well, that's really cool. Let me learn more yeah. about that. That's cool and all right now, but I want it to be the point where it's so normal that people just do it and move on. And, uh, you know, that's possible in the next three to five years, you know, LinkedIn bio is very popular for being on your Instagram, on your social media. What about your LinkedIn bio in person, right? Like when I meet you, I want to be able to share all of me with you quickly. And so it just kind of makes sense uh, as we move yeah, forward. Yeah. How do you cater to the experience? Are there certain platforms that you prioritize or think are more important in terms of communicating someone's experience, or is that specifically designed for the user to select? Yeah. So it's a great question. Most of it's designed for the user, but we do have a recommended section, which is kind of like our most shared links. And yeah. those are mostly around the contact info. That's usually key for people. Everyone has a phone number. So imagine like you, you throw, a, you know, throw a million people into an app, mm -hmm. which, which links are going to be most popular. Well, everyone has phone numbers. So obviously, and email. So those two are the most popular. So contact information is what we see most. And then also we are really focused on professionals. So we also mm -hmm. encourage LinkedIn, the WhatsApps, the Twitters, I guess, Calendly. Yes. So those kind of more professional links as well. Yeah. What do you, ha have you seen any trends of the different ways people are, are, or, or I guess different preferences that people are sharing information? Like, yeah, I feel like for the last, well, yeah, I, I've been in, I've been in the game for a minute. So the last five, six, maybe even almost 10 years, it's, it's been LinkedIn, particularly in, in terms of professional sharing. But as you kind of now with the remote work environment, I have a lot of, you know, clients and people that I work with outside of the country, like WhatsApp and Telegram have become very more, more popular in my, but is there anything trending in a way that people are sharing more of their information or making a deeper connection using different information, or is it still predominantly like LinkedIn and those, those websites that kind of come to mind offhand? Yeah. So when it, when it comes to sharing kind of who you are, LinkedIn's most popular in terms of professional. Because yeah. unlike a, a WhatsApp or a Telegram, that's your number and that's a way to contact you, but it doesn't really share who you are. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have that additional kind of resume type content. So yeah, LinkedIn, definitely the most popular for professional, but yeah. you know, LA, we're seeing a lot of Instagram. It's yeah. Very <laughs> common for LA. It's like, I'm not going to share my LinkedIn. I'm going to, Hey, what's your Instagram? Yeah. Also Twitter, you know, Twitter's kind of smaller, but it's, it's there. People share it for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, those are kind of the big ones. TikTok yeah. as well as Snapchat. You know, we used to, we started off as a very Gen Z focused company because of our TikTok phase. Mm -hmm. We uh, started the company by going viral on TikTok. That's kind of how we launched globally. And yeah. so at that time, we were very focused on the younger generation, Gen Z, younger kids. And they were really into like, I'm sharing my Snapchat, I'm sharing my TikTok. And so that was yeah. kind of uh, an older version of us seeing that sure. grow was, was really cool. What's fascinating to me is I feel like with, with the, with the coming generation, not only Gen Z, but you know, you've, you've heard it segmented into however many generations because of how quickly technology is changing, but how people are now actually very much incorporated in their professional life as, as them, as a segment of their maybe personality or, or kind of a mask of theirs. If you think about per persona, you know, the word persona comes from the word personas. It's a mask essentially that was, you know, when, when people did theater back in the day. They had a mask and, and it would essentially resonate a sound and that mask was a persona, right? And so people have oh, different personas. Yeah, yeah. My, my founder blessed me with that information. But it's interesting that the professional persona of yourself is now becoming much more involved in your overall life and people are really attaching themselves to the work that they do. Do you see that kind of with the information that they're sharing or, or have you seen that kind of uh, movement towards, I guess, when you were working with Gen Z clientele more so versus now or, or customers now, or what, what, what are you seeing in the marketplace in terms of like how people are connecting and the ways they're connecting the information that they're incorporating? Yeah. So, I mean, when you share your pop link with someone, it's really an extension of you. So people are yeah. really, they're, they're very focused on kind of how it looks. They want to make sure that it looks like them and that's sharing information that's to them. So yeah, you know, that's key, whether you're a younger generation or older, having that kind of look exactly how you want it to is, is key. And, you know, we have customization options that we are coming out with for that specifically. That being said, I do think we lean more towards the LinkedIn as opposed to yeah. the, what's an example, like the link tree. So link tree, sure. you can create this tree of links. That's kind of like, here's my background image yeah. and I want my links to look like this. And I want my colors to be this. I want my name to be in this color. We have some customization, but we're kind of more on the LinkedIn side. You know, LinkedIn, you can't, you have no customization. Yeah. Here's yeah. how your profile looks. That's it. Right. 
Yeah. So we kind of are leaning more towards that, but we do have a little bit of customization kind of in between. So it's yeah. a nice spectrum there. What, what's the reason behind that? Well, I mean, I think we are trying to be more professional. Yeah. And then also the, we also have this kind of like mindset that when you connect with someone, the goal isn't to, oh, that's a really pretty page, right? The goal is for them to connect with you on those platforms. So how can we design a page that is just optimized for that conversion? We want that person to click on what you want them to click on. So they connect with you on that platform. Right. So we can build something really beautiful and distracting, or we can build something that's like, here are the links that they want to share with you. Click on yeah. these so you can connect. Yeah. What, and, and, and how are you working? I know right now you're, you're working with a lot of the consumers and, and you know, you're shipping out the physical technology. Honestly, I was looking at your website and I was like, I think I'm going to get the one that goes on the back of the iPhone. That just seems yep. super cool That's my and super fish. Yeah. Yeah. But how are you working with companies? Are you, are you starting to think about partnerships and ways to kind of collaborate and, and incorporate your technology on, on a larger scale? And if so, how are you thinking and, and strategizing and moving in that direction? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we have Popple Teams now. So Popple Teams is our second software product after Pro. And Popple Teams is for organizations to set up digital business cards for their employees, right? So we have companies that will join Popple Teams, say, I want to set up digital cards for my 30 employees. And so then they say, okay, I join. I create 30 cards, I bulk create the links. So, right, we want, that's the whole point of teams. We don't want them to have to do one by one. That's a nightmare. Yeah. And like, imagine if you're a team with thousands of employees and imagine yeah. you wanted to create cards for everyone that would not go, <laughs> like that would take you days to, to months. So we make it very easy and efficient to use templates and create things in bulk, set profile photos in bulk. So you can set up thousands of cards very quickly. And then you could just say, okay, I'm ready to distribute these to my team. You can assign them via an email. You can send out invites. And so it makes it very easy for a team to get started. Incredible. Tell me a little bit more about the traction. You, you've now said that you, I think you have, you have three warehouses, you're distributing internationally. You've gone viral already, which is some of the, one of the hardest things to do for a lot of companies, but when companies do it well, I think it adds such a, so, so much value towards the, the trust and, and reliability of a product. But tell me a little bit more about the traction, you know, how, how many consumers that have your, your product, how many companies are you working with within the Popple teams? What's the growth look like? And then since you, from conception until now. Yeah, absolutely. So I can't say too much details, but in terms of total users and, and teams, we have over seven figures of um, those, at, you know, using Popple. So it's really exciting. And we also are about to surpass 20 million connections, which wow. means 20 million uses of our product, which is really cool. And a couple months ago, we also just hit a, a fun little stat where during the 12 hours of daylight for the US, there was a pop that happens every single second. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's a, really? that's a lot. I mean, yeah, no, that, that's incredible. Now kind of thinking about taking a step back here, you know, you've, you've had a lot of success. You're seeing the numbers increase exponentially and, and that status is amazing to see how much people are, are utilizing the, the technology to make these connections. What are some of the bi biggest risks that you see or that you face today with, you know, Popple and, and the company and, and what you're doing? Yeah. So the, the biggest kind of hurdle that we're constantly working on is teaching a new concept to the world right now, when you meet people. It's a natural behavior to whether it's like, I'm going to hand you my phone and you're going to type in your number, or I'm going to, you know, what's another example? Like, I guess this is kind of a small example, but it's like, I hand you my Instagram and I yeah. search bar and I say, type in your Instagram. Right. And then I hand right. it and you type it in. So th that's kind of the way things go right now, which is you know very inefficient and not good with COVID. I know COVID's kind of, yeah, it's, it, it can be improved. Right. And so. And even when they type that in, it's like, okay, you have now one information from them. You don't have anything else you want to share. So we are constantly overcoming this obstacle of teaching this new behavior. Don't do that. Instead, tap their phone with this, right? It's like, just, yeah. you know, it's sometimes a little, a little bit hard to teach the world a new concept, a new behavior. That's one of the hardest things to do, teaching the world a behavior, whether it's consumers or enterprise customers and employees, mm -hmm. it's kind of like you have that, that hurdle to hop over. And so, yeah, constantly working with that, making it easier to better education so that users know exactly how to share and, and how our products work is, is, is key for our, our business. Yeah. How, how are you, how are you training a new behavior, um, within, within your customer base? Well, 
it's a lot of education. So in our app, we have onboarding tools that say, here's how you share, right? This is what you want to do. You want to tap this part of their phone. You want to tap this part of iPhones, this part of Androids, and really make it crystal clear with animations and videos, how to share with these devices. And then also fun little like encouragements, rewards, I guess, competition, right? Ways to increase usage because people want to be kind of like at the top of their game. For example, in our app, we just released a world ranking. So out of all of our users, you get a certain percentile for how much you share. So you can be in the top 1%, the top 5%, the top 10%, et cetera. And so we have all these customers who, who they want to be as high as possible because it shows, it shows I'm networking, it shows I'm meeting people. And so, uh, it's, it's really exciting to see kind of how those encouragements will, will get people to you know, use the product more and actually teach that behavior. Yeah. I'm a huge, I was such a huge fan of when companies use kind of just a different, whether it's competition or, you know, sharing a certain you know, thing in an amount of time, ways that they encourage their users and education and educate them on how to use their product more efficiently. I, I feel like, you know, previously a lot of companies are doing a one size fits all. If you don't get it, you know, then, then you're not in the know. But more companies are shifting towards a model that not only encourages their users, but educates them and then kind of promotes this kind of community around sharing and, and building themselves in, in a productive way. So it's, so it's kind of this, you know, kind of what's the word, like symbiotic relationship between the product and, and the experience, which is you know, super cool. If everything Absolutely. goes right, what's the long-term vision for Popple? Oh, well, we want to IPO with the ticker P-O-P-O. No, yeah, I love that. <laughs> love to hear it. What happens? Yeah, no, I love to hear it. Well, awesome, Jason. Well, I always like to ask this question as a you know, selfish research for myself, but also for my audience to gather some more information and, and get inspired. But what books or people have influenced you the most? Yeah. So, in terms of, I'll start with books. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Very classic, but a great read. I've read it twice now. So it's good to kind of read books again and, and make sure you digest the information clearly. So that's a key one. Other two are zero to one, another classic, great book, talks about network effects, talks about growing a company from the very start. And then finally, Sand Hill Road, very relevant. If you're talking to a lot of VCs, if you're raising capital, Sand Hill Road is kind of all about what you want to do to frame yourself for doing a successful fundraise. And then in terms of people. I'd say three people. Well, so the first one is Michael Seibel, who I mentioned earlier, our YC kind of advisor. Been incredible throughout that process. The next one is my dad. So my dad, also Michael. I would yeah, Mike though. He's an, uh, an active advisor and investor in in, my, in our company. And it's awesome to have, you know, my family involved. And he has, from the beginning, been extremely helpful for us. He's very involved with UC Berkeley's startup scene. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to say, when I first had the idea with my co-founder, Nick, he was able to be like, all right, this is what you need to do. You need to incorporate. You need to get your banking set up. You need to get your legal team set up. And so he kind of gave us all these to do's and it was like getting advice from someone who has done this thousands of times yeah. at UC Berkeley. So, so it was like really perfect to have him as my dad. And he was just very helpful, obviously like free work as a family member. And so definitely, you know, and it's still helping us today. I had a call with him earlier today. So still very involved in the company. And I, I love that guy. He's a great part of my life. And then I guess, you know, my partners, Nick and Jeremy, who work really hard with me every day and my team, obviously every on the team works hard, but my partners, Nick and Jeremy, who are there with me since day one have been incredible. And so just want to give them a little shout out. I love that, man. Well, well, thank you so much for sharing not only your experience, but the influence that I think your technology has and in, in the, I, I love the idea of companies that you know, make a process so efficient and so much more smooth when, when in, you know, you're in a situation where there you want to network, you want to, you want to complete a task. They're, they're just such great and intelligent ways to move things forward with, with little friction, you know, kudos to you. And I love the success. And last little bit, I always like to give my guests a chance to send me their plugs. So what's your LinkedIn, what's your Twitters, how can we support pop your, your vision and your idea? Where can we find it? Check this out. So we're going to use popple, right? <laughs> so if anyone wants to connect with me. Go ahead and scan that. I'll leave this up for like two seconds. Throw this one up. Okay. Here. Boom. I got it. <laughs> yep. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Amazing, yeah, man. So that's how you can connect with me. And then Popple is available on our website, popple.co. Not .com, popple.co. We're working on that. 
And we are also available in Walmart. We're available in Staples. If you want to go in person, we're also on Amazon. We're on target.com, bestbuy.com. Basically we make it so that you can get Popo anywhere. And so, yeah, any of those platforms works. Incredible. Well, Jason, thank you so much for being on the show. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And, you know, I'm excited not only to launch this episode, but for people to be able to have a way to connect more quickly, more efficiently, whether they're, you know, going to an event on purpose or find themselves certain, you know, coincidentally at one and, and connecting with friends and, and other people professionally. But again, thank you so much for being on the show and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Julian. Great conversation. And I'm excited to see where this goes. Right on.